Hadoop.org's exclusive coverage of Hadoop Summit 2013. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Welcome everybody, Ben Werther is here, longtime CUBE alum. He's the founder and CEO of Platfora, a company that's bringing sub-second interactive BI into Hadoop. Uh, ben, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, great to be back. You've yeah, been so no, you've been, no, I'm just saying, CUBE alumni, you've been on from the beginning with the Cube, and now you're a big time CEO, big financing, growing, big company. Um, what's it like? Yeah, it really, really exciting. I think we've, um, you know, I'm, I'm coming, coming on when we were at the point where we had a concept, we had the beginnings of a product, and then I think I joined you guys around the time we launched our product. Yep. You know, now we're uh, in market, uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, we're adding, we added our first couple of 400, 500 customers, we're really getting momentum that's, uh, that's uh, you know, across different, different uh, verticals, and it's, it's fantastic to see So Dave, Dave and I were talking the other day, and um, we were talking about the, the changing nature of this modern era, and it's one of the things that's going on in the enterprise right now is, you have the old school and the new school, and I think you know, it, it's, it's really clear to us, we've talked about this in the past, old way, new way, and I think that this show, Enterprise Grade, uh, Ben, has been key, and you guys take a different approach, so mm -hmm. uh, give us an update on what, what you guys are doing, yeah, and then let's absolutely. talk about what you guys are doing differently, and how are you guys enabling that innovation for the customers? Sure, absolutely. Our, you know, I think the, the old way is, uh, the, it's, it's, you know, the question is sort of how do you go rebuild the old data warehouse on this new stack of technology, which I, I think there are use cases where that makes sense, but in, in, you know, one of the things that sort of stru struck us more and more with our, the customers we work with is, hey, the kinds of data you're putting into Hadoop, and you want to mix together. These are not data sets that you want to treat the same old way. You know, you don't want to do traditional uh, sort of staid business reporting against you know these uh, event logs and clickstream data and sort of social graph data. There's so much more interesting questions about behavior and insight that you want to drive from those. And so I think it's really pushing towards um, not just how you know how do we make BI work in this environment, but you know really how do we allow people to kind of express these things that today take custom development, they take a year of smart data scientists and make those questions that a business user can just sit down and ask visually you know, this afternoon. Well, that's why I like having Ben on, John, because you know, let's face it, a lot of the platform vendors here, they, they, they're coexisting, they're working with other large you know, database companies yeah. or traditional BI companies, and they've got to be politically correct. <laughs> and you were actually quite kind just now, but yeah. I mean, you've been more forceful about, you know, look, you, yes, you can do that, yeah. but there's so much more business value that you can drive yeah. if you kind of rethink the way in which BI is done. Absolutely. Uh, and we've Absolutely. talked about this before, the BI in many ways has just failed to live up to its promises. Mm -hmm. so, so what are you seeing today and, and what gives you confidence that your vision will mm -hmm. be able to live up to its promise? Yeah, um, I, I mean, I think the clearest, the, the clearest indication is customers using the product. Um, you know, we, uh, nothing gets me more excited than you know, going into an organization and there's often naysayers who say, hey, we have these existing investments, how, do you go, how are you going to leverage whatever, you know, the micro strategy and the other tools I have? And our, and our point is, okay, look, that, that, that's fine to have for the existing use cases, the, you know, they're good products, but let's talk about the kinds of things you're trying to answer, the kind of data you're, you're bringing together, and let's look at what you're, what you're trying to achieve. And we, we rapidly see there's business users disenfranchised, data sets that often have you know, much more interesting character. You know, if I'm getting clickstream data, every record I may have you know, dozens or hundreds of different tags of different things that I can use for interesting segmentation, uh, different types of behavioral analytics. I, wanna, I can look at combining these data sets in surprising ways. Um, and you know, the, idea, the idea that you're going to try to do that uh, you know, the, the idea that even if you made the traditional stuff work in Hadoop land, which I think is um, a dead end, honestly, uh, because, you know, the, the, the uh, like, success, when you get there, you realize that that's not what's the success, that's not success. You, you just recreated a model that had a lot of inherent flaws in it. Yeah, but so when you go into an account, um, if you're talking to a line of business person, the last thing they're going to say is that their objective is just to, you know, preserve their current data warehouse infrastructure. Sure, they don't sure, know sure. what they don't care about yeah. it, but there must be a segment of the population that says, okay, yes, we want to, we want all these great insights, but we yeah. also want to leverage this investment that we've made over the last 20 years. What do you yeah. do in that situation? Do you run, not walk? No, I think, I think, I mean, I think we're very uh, clear with them, which is that, they're, look, you, you, you're not going to throw away any of your existing investments, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of good use cases that are being served by them. But I think the biggest, I think the biggest learning that companies have is they start out saying, okay, I have Hadoop and I, I'm gonna, I have a data warehouse, I add Hadoop, 
and I want to pre-process data in Hadoop and put the, the arrow goes from Hadoop into the data warehouse so that the real work happens in the data warehouse. And I think they, the, the, the challenge is you end up with silos of data, you end up with a model where Hadoop doesn't have all the data and the data warehouse doesn't have all the data and you have frustrated customer, frustrated, frustrated users. And the, the, the next step of maturity is you flip the arrow and you start putting all that data into Hadoop. So you still have your existing systems, but there's a whole class of new questions that you can enable because you now have data that may span much like a wider variety of silos. Some of the banking customers we, took, we work with, they're thinking about how do I do a 360 degree view of a customer analysis with all these different silos of data that if I was to try to integrate in a traditional sense, it would be a decade long project but just landing that data in Hadoop can be the beginning of doing this very, very rapidly in an agile fashion. Well, and the problem with that, what you described, is you get business processes established for each one of those data silos yeah. that are very rigid. Yeah. So <laughs> talk about how your customers are changing their business processes. Yeah, um, I mean one is we, we sidestep that a little bit because we don't try to replace the existing systems. You know, if they're doing transactional work and it's working in those environments, uh, that's good. We don't want to be in that business. But I think that, you know, the, the key is, that data is a resource that can be combined with other things in a way that you know you, we're not we're not trying to go in and replace the existing re-platform re your reports. We're mm -hmm. trying to help you answer more interesting questions that aren't being answered today. So the bar is very very low. And so once you get those data sets, as long as you can start to unify some of the common, you know, if I'm thinking about 360 degree of a customer, well, what is a customer? Do I have keys that I can match up in some way? Can I view this in a holistic way? Um, but then I can, if I add new, if I have new uh, data being generated, if I get into mobile advertising and I have all these different new events related to mobile behavior, as long as I can key that to customer, now I can weave that in, have this sort of dimension or entity centric view of it rather than the traditional star schema which becomes like this, just heavy, heavy weight thing to, to, you know, to manipulate. And I want to ask you about, so it's the news here, you got some certification, you guys are certified with Hortonworks yeah. now, I see you certified technology partner with Cloudera as well. Absolutely. You're in the ecosystem, right? Yeah, so you're in the middle and the heart of the action. What's the state of the union, if you will, of the, of the community here? Because you're, you're seeing sure. everything from all sides. And then let's talk about the business value. So two questions. One, first, the state of the ecosystem, the community of developers and vendors, yeah. you know, kind of rowing in the same direction. The boats are hitting each other a little bit here and there, but for the most part, uh, things are going well. Yes, um, yes. And then the business value conversation. Absolutely. So first, uh, the ecosystem, and then yeah. where the business value is in all this. Yeah, I think the, at the ecosystem level, um, Great, I mean, it's maturing, it's solidifying. You know, we, we do great work with, you know, Hortonworks, Cloudera, uh, working with MapR and, you know, Pivotal and the, uh, Am even the Amazon guys. There's so much interesting. So you guys Switzerland? You guys Never been like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, we, I mean, we really do, I mean, so at some level, we, we want to make it easy to drive business value against all of these. I mean, we'll obviously have this good, good working business relationships where they're bringing us into opportunities to help show business value more quickly and we're, Likewise, you know, trying to be very neutral, but help you know identify and uh, surface opportunities for all these guys. Um, I, you know, I think the key is uh, you know that layer of the stack is now pretty mature, and there's some good new capabilities coming in around um, you know the SQL interfaces, which we're interest, which we think are very positive. The evolution towards Hadoop two and Yarn, and and the idea that Hadoop can be a much broader platform, which I think is a fantastic evolution. Uh, so we're trying to stay on top of all these things and, and partner. So you got to invest in that. So as CEO, yeah. you got to you got to put a little investment on the on continuing the partner and staying up to Absolutely. date. Um, in terms of pr solutions that you guys are putting out yeah. there, on yeah. the questions that's come up, this is the theme of the show, obviously enterprise grade. Yeah. You know, it's the meat and potatoes, it's the, this, the, the, the rubber hits the road, the sizzle and the steak, right? right. Whatever metaphor you want to use, the clients want business value, that's, yeah. that's the proof, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. can you describe the, when you walk in, what is the business value that you guys are hitting yeah. for, for your customers? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, it's, it's, I think that the thing that still startles me is how, how much people have been attuned to living in a world where things take a year or more. I mean, the number of times you've walked into a company that's where they have a Hadoop roadmap and plan where business value is some thing off in the horizon once they start to, you know, they've proven a whole lot of things, they've brought this data together, they build out some test things, and at some point they imagine they're going to put this in front of users and validate that it actually is solving a problem. Um, being able to go in and, I mean, we, we often will, you know, we'll be up and running for a, uh, we'd like to do a demonstration against their data to show them what's possible, not even a POC necessarily. Um, usually in a day, uh, we're up and running and answering questions. So who calls you in? Who's who's calling you guys in? Because obviously, yeah. you know, you've you've mentioned you're basically saying, okay, speed, right? So that's the number one thing yeah. you're hitting, basically speed. 
um, you know, but, but also, also a democratization. For the, I mean, how do you, I mean, we, we love to find, we often talk about, talk about the angry business user. <laughs> like, there's a, somebody who's yeah, pointing at that weekend. data. I gotta work this weekend, <laughs> jeez, no, no, missed my vacation. <laughs> well, it's like, I know there's data in there, don't tell me there's no data in there. I, I want to get, uh, here's my question, and don't tell me I gotta go queue up and wait six months to get an answer. Um, and so, l showing that person how they can help themselves get at the data and solve their problem, and so giving this platform where IT can actually be a hero because it lets the business users get stuff done. Um, which is very different. I mean, most of these things, solutions, honestly, are still, they're not about people. They're not about people solving problems. They're still, you know, low level plumbing for developers. You know, we really want to focus on, you know, if I, I, I like to imagine, you know, somebody who's at some, you know, insurance company, there's their, this whole big data wave is, you know, is, is messing with their, you know, their career plans. They're trying to figure out, you know, what, how are they going to be successful in the, in, as this, the currents of change are hitting here. And we want to help them see a path where they can, they can win and they can well, I was talking successful. to a big insurance company, they have a billion dollar operating IT budget. I was talking to one of the top guys and we were in, I was in Boston area a couple of last month and he said, look at, you know, telematics has changed our, our world. I mean, yeah. obviously big data, they're measuring everything, right? Yeah. So now yeah. they're sitting there with all this data, yeah. kind of just sitting in a batch going, what do we do with it? Exactly. And exactly. so is that when they call you in? Are you, now you guys yeah. come in as a SaaS model, you can put an appliance so we, in, what, yeah, what's so we, the product? I mean, we, so we sell software, uh, we, you know, we'll run it on commodity servers that they'll have on premise typically. If, if they're in the cloud, then we can run in the cloud, that's fine, but we're not, we're not hosting the software. Uh, but the, you know, typically it's at the point where um, they've, they've usually got, got some data in Hadoop, they've realized that there's this gap of capabilities uh, and they could either start down a long process of trying to build this, build something custom, take all the sort of off the, you know, the emerging open source projects and, and hope that they get to something that is useful enough, or you know, they're interested in coming and talking talk to us and, ha and having us sort of show them. So we, we, we talk to folks all the time, in SAP for instance, we were at uh, SAP Sapphire, and obviously HANA's the big you know, thing they're going to ride that horse, and, and, and they tried out some pretty significant numbers, right? They say things like, hey, it was 13 weeks to run this query, now it's 13 minutes. I yeah. mean, a significant, significant order yeah. of magnitude of, yeah. of savings. I mean, you're talking about, basically, I can go on vacation yeah. for 13, you know, 13 weeks to 13 minutes. Yeah. Those kinds of numbers are just I, you know amazing. So do you guys have similar I, kind of order of magnitude? So I like I like to think of a different different pivot on the same thing. There was a an example of a uh, a big online retailer we spoke with. They described their process. If they wanted to change one column that showed in one report, so they wanted to bring a new field through their entire stack from ETL to data warehousing to BI. This was uh, 18 months. Three outsource firms, monthly risk mitigation. They want to add a data point. But yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ten to fifteen <laughs> engineers uh, for that entire duration, just <laughs> handling the fragile coupling of m working this through all these layers, and hopefully not breaking something along the way. And so when we show these guys that, like, literally in our model, they have an, a dynamically created aggregate against the raw data. They, add, they like a shopping cart. They add the extra field they want, and they say, "I want this in there." The MapReduce jobs automatically change, build out the in-memory structures in five minutes they're working with that new data. I mean, that's just, it's like, it's actually a credibility jump to say, because they say, well, how could it be so easy, you know? And you guys have been exploiting, obviously, in memory, but in memory's been around, you know, since, since database, in memory database has been around, since database has been yeah. around. So why now? Why is there such, you know, a fever pitch around in memory? Yeah, um, well, I think there's a lot of different meanings of in memory, and I think that the thing that is hard about in memory in this context, in, in a, from an analytic context, mm -hmm. and why, you know, is because you you know, how do you reconcile big data within memory? Particularly, big data is about data that's growing faster than Moore's law. You know, right. there's, there's more and more of it, so I'm never going to have enough machines to, you know, it's it's going to be I'm going to I'm scaling out to keep up. How do I use in memory in a practical way? And you know, a lot of vendors will talk about, well, I'm going to manually cache in chunks of data, process on them, throw them away, and I'm going to have to do all this sort of manual shifting and moving of stuff. All kinds of gymnastics, right? Yeah, I, I mean, in our model, it's, you think of it more like this intelligent aggregate cache. So it's really like, the analogy I sometimes use is, um, it's like in Google Maps, you look at, you know, you look at some view on the screen, you don't see all the pixels behind there, all the way down to the finest grain. You see levels of detail appropriate to the question you're asking, and knowing that you can zoom in and change your view. And so use it in memory intelligently as a sort of closed loop feedback where you can see what's interesting and you can, if you find an interesting segment of users or something else, you can just go there and it'll build it out for you dynamically instead of waiting for IT and waiting six, 12 months to do that. So my last question is you talked about the angry business user. Yeah. 
you know, maybe forming partnerships with IT. We had Merv on yesterday from Gartner. Yeah, I love Merv. And, and Merv was saying that he said that his prediction was history is, you know, we're destined to repeat history here, where you know, distributed computing and even the even the websites and the internet, where the lines of business went off and did their thing, and just like they're doing with big data now, and so yeah. IT just sort of finally comes along, or somebody mandates that IT gets involved. But you telling a little bit different story. Uh, you're, mm -hmm. I'm inferring from what you said that you're seeing partnerships in your customer base between the angry business user and the IT lines. Is that rare, yeah. is that common, are there real IT heroes? Is that a, is yeah. that a typical scenario or not uh, enough? I, I, think, I think it's, um, it's going to be interesting to see how it evolves. I think today, typically the group that brought in Hadoop, it may be brought in by the business, it's typically an IT team in one sense or another. Mm -hmm. um, they may not actually understand the way the business is using Hadoop. They may just, like, there are cases where people are pu pushing data and they're querying it and they're just providing, the IT team is just providing the infrastructure. Um, but I think that you, we're still at a maturity level where if IT isn't involved at all, it's probably, I mean, like, somebody's paying for support around Hadoop, somebody has to make it real to get going, and that's probably an IT person today. But I think we evolve beyond that and I think the really interesting question is 12, 18 months from now when we, when, I, when Hadoop is like the dial tone that anybody can just turn on, mm -hmm. um, you know, does it, does it, are people doing kind of self-service or sort of departmental shadow use of this stuff? Um, does it go well beyond, I mean, does it go beyond the sort of the IT managed infrastructure? I, yeah, I don't know, it'll be interesting to say. Amazon. Ben, yeah. we, gotta, we gotta get going here, but I want to just uh, get one more question in before we break. We're going to have another entrepreneur come on. You're an entrepreneur, founder, CEO. Um, give us the update on the company, obviously. We're so, impressed. I mean, we always love having founders on because, so. you know, entrepreneurs, it's, uh, it's not easy to build a company. You've done yeah. a great job. I mean, obviously going from conception to growth, um, and then the pain is just beginning because you now have some big financing. Give us the update on, <laughs> yeah. on, on funds raised, and then your growth strategy. What's, yeah, what's the plans for you guys? Yeah, so, we, uh, so we've raised now two rounds of funding. Uh, we raised back uh, in August of 2011, uh, 7.2 million, uh, and then raised 20 million in Series B. So this is from Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, is, you know, fantastic, Battery Ventures, Sutter Hill Ventures, InQtel, every one of them a beautiful, uh, you know, fantastic investor. Um, we've... Uh, well, they're we going to hold your feet to the fire. They're good investors, they're beautiful and friendly now, yes. but you have to execute a growth strategy. Just to give us the growth, yeah. give us the growth yeah. plan for yeah, you guys. Absolutely. So we're... And uh, then again, can, and then we'll <laughs> see what happens. So we, so we, I mean, we're seeing the customer uptake that we, we wanted to see, which is allowing us to hit the gas. And so today we're about, six, about 60 people uh, we just moved into a new office. We've got space for about 100 and 180 in our office. So you're so we've got some growth to go. And uh, you know, we're focusing on building out the sales organization, uh, building out field customer success uh, services side of things, as well as, even though very, we're very light services wise, just enough, we want to ensure that customers just have an amazing experience with the product. Um, you know, and then everything else that goes with that, more engineering, more uh, product design, uh, and the rest. So. You know, I think the, the focus is, you know, we want to run fast. We have a huge opportunity here. You know, we have, gr I mean, just every, every interesting company we talk to wants to use our product and we want to make sure we can make them successful with it. So we just have to uh, move fast enough to keep up with the interest. Well, good luck. We like uh, following, you guys have been following your progress from day one. A very impressive run, continue to the journey. Good luck Thank and uh, we'll be following you. You guys are a good friend of theCUBE. We appreciate you coming on, sharing your perspective and obviously good luck with the venture. We'll be tracking you guys. This right. is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We're here live at Hadoop Summit uh, 2013. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Great. Thank you very much.